Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with more His Dark Materials. This is the season two premiere and Lyra and Will have both gone through their respective gates uh, to a different world after Roger was sacrificed uh, by Lord Asriel to get to open up the, the one in Lyra's world. And uh, excited to see what happens this season. I believe I read part of the second book, but I don't remember anything in the book other than what the Seidel Knife does. Um, I know what it does. I won't ruin it for anybody out there who hasn't uh, read the books and is just watching this for the first time. But I'm excited to continue. If you guys want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. What does Will think he's stepping into? They just passed through the gate and went to sleep? I forgot how great the cinematography is of this show. Now she decides to be a good mother and she goes the wrong damn way. Oh yeah, take a brief second to leave a like. I've been having some problem with the YouTube algorithm recently. Really, really, really would help me out. Oh. I'm somehow reminded of Interstellar, that scene with the bookcases. I hadn't seen that before I watched season one. I don't like this. Free food, though, if you've had trouble gathering some yourself. Something's happened here, Pan. Azrael? Wouldn't put it past him. People were in the middle of their meal. But he just got here. Should we ask the alethiometer where everyone is? It's never lied to us. Without it, would Roger have died? No. We need to make our own way now. That's true, I guess, but I wouldn't say it's the lithiometer's fault. A new world, and Azrael simply exploded it into being. <laughs> Presumably, it was already there. Heresy! The bomb has been exploded. The world is aware. We cannot ignore what everyone has seen. We would lose. Witches have claimed knowledge of other worlds. This witch may help us understand this instability. Do me the honor of talking with her. We have yet to understand what is your precise role in all of this. What did you and Azrael discuss on the mountain on that night? I never reached Azrael, your eminence. There is one, possibly multiple worlds up there. And these witches have always known more than they should. Let me find out what. I didn't reach Azrael in time, and I vow now never to fail again. <laughs> but she did meet with Azrael. She's playing them, I guess, right now. Oh! I'm sorry I scared you. You didn't scare me. Sorry, I scared you. Please let me go. Damn, damn. Who are you? Will Parry. Finally, someone else to talk to. <sighs> no, 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 you can't touch. He does know not to touch me, right? It's a talking animal. No, it's not a talking animal. That's my demon. You don't have a demon? She's scared. Lara Silverton. Doesn't have one. Wait. Lee. You're being strange. I'm not being strange. <laughs> the whole world is talking about that tear in the sky. The witches will want us to join the fight. Isn't that something? Hi. Hi, Will. <laughs> that glare. To me, demon means something evil. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, thanks. I crossed through a window, but my father made 
I uh, followed the cat through a hole in the air. <laughs> it sounds mad. I don't know whether I'm odd for not having a demon or you're odd for having one, but maybe we could look around together. That's the best idea I've heard all day. <laughs> Yay! Share that information and we can become productive. Your tone doesn't match what you're I'm saying. I'm looking for a child. Neither do your actions. with an aeronaut and one of your kind. A witch's cloud pine. <laughs> Oh, come on. It has to do with dust. I think that's why I'm here. Dust. dust? You don't have dust? No, we have dust. I'm just guessing my dust is not the same as your dust. There's someone there. And she's sprinting. <laughs> Why are you and why were you running from us? Who are you and why were you chasing us? Because you're the only other people we've seen here. We just want to know about this place. It's Liana Mormont, right? Oh man. Liana! She looks so young here, which means she was even younger when she was on Game of Thrones. Where are the grown ups? Clever ones have run. Since the attack, spectres are everywhere. Spectres? What spectres? He's close though. To the change. What change? When you're a man. Puberty? And the spectres can get you. Oh. Just like Tilio. They take your insides out. You're still alive. But everything that makes you human, that's gone. Kind of like a Dementor's kiss. Uh, what are you doing? Paying? Paying for the food we are Paying who? Eating without paying for it is stealing. If you start behaving like a grown-up, the spectres will get you. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> That look I don't trust her. Stanislaus Grumman. He knows the whereabouts of some kind of object that gives magical protection. Now, when Lyra and the trouble she's in, I thought I might find this item for her and take it to her. Take this with you. And whenever you need my help, hold it in your hand and call to me. I shall hear you wherever you are. Thank you, ma'am. Sisters, Katya Circa has been taken prisoner by the Magisterium. We're out of our depth here. Shut up, Hester. <laughs> so the time has come to act. To show the Magisterium that their actions have consequences. I made an omelet. If you have omelets, you know what? <laughs> so you're a kitchen boy then? Kitchen boy? What? Haha! <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you don't use cutlery in your world either. Very funny. It's good. Maybe we're better off sticking together from now on. <laughs> You want me to stay? I meant we should explore together. I didn't mean you should move in. First you attack me, and then you run away, and now you're trying to stay here. You move at 100 <laughs> miles an hour. 100 miles an hour? I'll take the small bed if you want. I was sleeping there. I was sleeping there. OK, fine. Yeah, I'll find somewhere downstairs. It's a war against the Magisterium. By herself? Did none of the others go with her? Oh, oh come on! now one of the coolest moments of last season was seeing the witches in action. What do you want to know? What this place is? Whether Roger would forgive me? Of course he would. Watch. Well, watch out. You're just gonna... What? What are you doing? What are you doing? See? It's easy. Wait, the eggshells are in the, the the omelet? There are eggshells in the omelet. 
Lyra! You seem to have added your own twist to it. <laughs> His phone still has batteries after all this time? What the heck? Oh! He's been taken already. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Angelica, was it? Go. If he's dead, you're grabbing power, right? If he dies, then the choice has been made. You heard the man. He could seal up the world. The Magisterium cannot survive that it needs. And I will personally tend to his wounds. Tend to his but wounds. I will make it my sin. It's As your sin too, if you allow it to happen. She's good at playing people. Oh, you mean Amber? Amber. Your world's like my world, but with the words mixed up. <laughs> or your world's like my world, with all the words mixed up. <laughs> I'm from Oxford. That's where my window is. Two Oxfords. Worlds apart. Will, we need to go now. Please. Show me the window. No one will talk about dust in my world. I'm not safe in my Oxford. Neither is he. safe in my Oxford. He trusts me. I need to know whether I can trust him. I want one. He's a murderer. Technically true. He had a vision? Of a knife? He's a murderer. The good kind. The good kind? Just like your egg. He's got something to do here. Is that the tower? Oh, no, 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 no. He's not... Not yet. He's not an adult yet. That's not the end of the episode, is it? It is? What? That felt like 30 minutes tops. Wow. That was so much fun. The episode passed by so quickly, and we only have seven episodes this season, so I'm wondering how they cram an entire book into just six more episodes. We were supposed to have an eighth episode that was focused on Lord Asriel, but uh, that was cut out due to the pandemic. Um, hopefully we get that at some point in the future, since it's all written and everything, it just had to be shot. Um, but yeah, this episode was so good. I think the best part of it has to be the burgeoning friendship between Will and Lyra. He made an omelette for her, and in return she asks if she, he's a kitchen boy. Uh, and then she tries to make an omelette for him with the shells in it. Oh my god. Uh, I, I forget how old she is in this show, but I mean, I started cooking when I was nine, but I know every, not that's like relatively early for most people, but to not even know not to put shells in an omelette uh that was a great moment where she like takes a bite and she's just like stone cold like faced like her she was just like in disbelief that she messed up so bad um and i kind of forgot how much i loved the character of lyra last season she's just constantly on the move non-stop and high energy and i don't know she's someone who i feel like would be fun to be friends with i think um when i was her age i guess but yeah she's Will probably could have found a better way to introduce himself, though, but he, like, tapped her out of nowhere, and she pinned him down hard. Very, very impressive. Uh, I forgot that she was in any way, like, physically imposing. Like, Will's a big, like, decent amount bigger than her, bigger than her so uh, that was surprising to see. Um, but, yeah, it was definitely fun seeing them learn about each other, each other's worlds. Uh, Lyra's demon, Pan. Uh, she says he has one, too, interestingly enough. But uh, yeah, they had entirely different words for different things, but they both speak English, I suppose, so they can communicate. 
Interestingly enough, the residents of Sidigaz, I don't know how to pronounce that yet, uh, they also speak English, which they come from completely different dimensions and worlds, and they all happen to speak the same language. That's really interesting. Um, got to see, speaking of the kids in this world, in Sidigaz, uh, we haven't seen Liana Mormont in a long time, I feel like. Uh, I say we. I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh, since Game of Thrones last season? I think it was the last season she, um, we saw her in. And uh, sad to see her and the other kids in Sidigaz attack a stray cat. I don't know. They're not used to animals at all. Um, Pan transformed and they were deeply scared of it, of him. But, um, I mean, that's mostly because he was taking the form of a scary animal. But, uh, I don't know. It seems like... I don't think they were doing it to torment the cat. I think something about this world uh, necessitates that kind of um, behavior, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but they don't have demons in this world, too. So Lyra's the odd one out for now. And also Lord Azriel, who's somewhere in this world, too. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but kids in Lyra's world can connect with dust in some way, right? Or they can see it. I, I forget what exactly uh, their interaction with dust is. And in Sidigaz, uh, specters are only able to attack adults. Is that because of the children's uh, affinity to dust? Um, so I don't know how all the rules of all these different worlds work, but there's a very strong focus throughout this series about the differences between children slash adolescents uh, versus adults. Uh, so it'll be interesting to, it'll be fun to dive into that when there's more to go on. Uh, favorite part of the episode, though, has to be after Lyra, uh, Lyra, no, after Liana Mormont, the, act, the little girl, gave them some food and w after they left, uh, Will tried to pay for the food when no one was even there. <laughs> Lyra gave him, like, the patented Lyra sass, and if you start behaving like a grown-up, the specters will get you. <laughs> and the look Will gave her was so good. He was just like, I, I, can't, I can't even do it. It was <laughs> just a look of disdain, like, <laughs> it was great. Uh, I really like the two of them together already. Um, it's a lot of fun seeing them interact. But yeah, back... In Lyra's world, uh, the cardinal, whatever guy in charge, wanting to deny what's right there in the sky, this huge opening. Um, it's like a life, it's a world-changing thing, and he just wants to straight up ignore it and, like, shush the masses. Uh, election in the U.S. just passed, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would have just went along with what the cardinal said because of just how many people refuse to wear a mask, uh, think the virus is a hoax. I uh, think there's massive voter fraud because the head guy said it. So I understand his way of thinking. I don't I don't accept it. I don't I think it's horrible, but I don't know. I feel like individuals can be smart, but the masses can be easily fooled. It can be dumb. Uh, maybe it's a case by case thing, but it was clearly I, I clearly did not want him and the magisterium to just like straight up ignore this giant light in the sky because that's ridiculous. It's so stupid to do that. Um and it seems like that won't happen because as Mrs. Coulter tortures the heck out of that witch, uh, the other witch comes to both... She originally was going there to save her, um, but she wound up silencing her instead. Um, she didn't want more information to leak to Mrs. Coulter, but she also knew there was no way out for this captured witch. And that was a very, very cool scene. I forgot how good the CGI is in the show. It's been an entire year almost, but... I'm just surprised at how good the show is. Um, I, I mentioned during my reaction that one of the coolest scenes from last season was, I think, episode 6 or 7, uh, when the witches show up at the compound where they're tearing humans from the demons, and the witches were just flying around. Uh, it was so, so cool to watch. Such a treat for the eyes. And, yeah, she, at that moment, when she's leaving on the way out, she get, takes down the cardinal, too. Uh, so it looks like his way of thinking of, like, covering up this whole thing is not going to come to pass. Um, not without a little help from Mrs. Coulter, though. She's really interesting because she was so abusive towards Lyra last season, but then, and then she does so many horrible, horrible things, but at the very end of the last season, she chooses not to follow Lord Asriel so that she can look after her daughter. So her heart was in the right place for that one little detail. So the correct sentiment is kind of there, but she's still, like, evil as heck, and I don't know, she... <sighs> 
I mean, Lyra follows Asriel anyway, so it's not like Mrs. Coulter has good maternal instincts. She went the opposite way of where Lyra was going. She could have gone with Asriel and been closer to Lyra. Um, and that one desire to protect Lyra doesn't change her morality in any significant way. Because uh, there she was in this episode torturing the heck out of that witch. Torture scenes are always super hard for me to watch, but that one was... I, I don't know, they have like things inside them that she can pluck out uh, that it's, it's the source of their magic powers i don't know if that means mrs Coulter can use them in any particular way i hope not um and then the devious devious plan to finish off that cardinal that guy in charge and put father mcphail in charge so she can go about her own business she is ruthless uh it's kind of terrifying actually but i think i think she's someone who we will go back and forth on a little bit about whether or not uh, she's we're on her side. Uh, we'll never agree with her abuse and the evil things she does, but uh, it feels like she's going to do some good things and also do some bad things. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, got to see Lin-Manuel Miranda for a little bit. I think this is... I don't remember when I started Hamilton Reactions, but uh, it's cool to see him again in this and of course, we, we didn't get to see too much of him though, so uh, looking forward to seeing. I don't know what, what his role is going forward. I feel like I read this book, but then I don't remember a single thing other than what the knife does. Um, and at the end of the episode, we have Will have some visions of a knife. And I guess for people who don't, who've only been watching the show, they might not even know the names of the books. Uh, so this book is The Subtle Knife. And I don't know, I don't know if... I remember what it does, but I don't know anything else about the show. So I, I feel like maybe somebody told me about what the knife does before I read the book, and I just never read the book, because otherwise I would remember, something would ring a bell, right? Um, but yeah, the Magisterium said something about something being in a tower. Is that the knife that's in the tower? And is that thing he's facing, that Will is facing at the end of the episode, the tower? Uh, and we see the specter creeping up on him. Uh, Great CGI for that though too. I, I don't I don't know why I'm like so surprised at how good the CGI is because it's a modern day show. I feel I keep feeling like this is a like the CGI can't be very good, but it is. Um, but he's close to being a man, which is why the specter is creeping up on him. He's not all the way there yet though, so yeah. Um, yeah, this was a really fun episode though. I can't believe it. by the time it ended, I felt like only thirty minutes had passed tops. Uh, there was, like, an intro or previously on, but still, it was ridiculous. Anyway, guys, uh, super fun episode. Uh, really having some algorithm troubles on YouTube, so it would really help out if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, we'll be back next week with more His Dark Materials. It's technically only out in the UK and won't be coming to the US for another week or so, but you can enjoy it here first. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, yeah, uh, hope you had fun. Hope you enjoy the reaction. I'll see you guys soon.